Hello fellow traders, Marv Eisen here from Time to Style Trading Academy. One of the first things we learn as traders is how to read candlesticks or reading candlesticks or using candlesticks. So I want to start out by looking at the chart of the S&P, not the E-mini, but the S&P on a one day candle. And I want to point out that on March 7th and 8th, there was a very familiar pattern put in and that's a bearish engulfing pattern and most of you will recognize it. I always like to look at the S&P because the E-mini, which I trade, is a construct. It's an artificial construct of the S&P, the actual market. And so whether this was caused by uh, the steep price drop in NVIDIA on Friday, March 8th, I don't know. But nevertheless, Friday's candle formation is a bearish engulfing pattern. So now let's move over to the S&P. And here's the S&P, rather the S&P E-mini. Here's my chart of the S&P E-mini on a three-minute candle. And this is March 7th, March 7th. And if you've seen my pre previous videos, you know that I always draw out the Taylor trading range on my chart. And I also put in the previous day's close. This was the close on March 6th. And so the Taylor trading range, the previous day's close, the Taylor trading resistance and support numbers are important pieces of information that I always use. Now, I want to make, make it clear that I don't know where the market is going to go. No one knows where the market is going to go. So if you know where the market is going to go, you could be a very successful trader, right? And so I want to go back to the S&P, the, the two candles on March 7th and March 8th. And I want to just point out something that's very, very basic. Candles have a beginning and an end. It begins at one point, it ends at another point. The key to knowing where the other point is, where the end of the candle is, is to try to determine where the beginning of the candle is. Does that make sense? It should. So now let's move back to the E-mini chart. And so, as I said, I use the Taylor trading zone, the actual support and resistance numbers, and the gap of the previous day as targets to determine where the market is likely to trade. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know that the Taylor trading zone is more accurate in terms of the range than the actual support and resistance numbers. So on Wednesday, March, on Thursday, March 7th, the prices opened up, E-mini prices opened up right over here at 51.46, thereabouts, and then quickly moved down to the target level of the Taylor resistance number, but never actually went into the calculated Taylor trading zone. So the key to finding the other end of the candle, remember I said that if you can find the beginning of the candle, you can most likely or very likely find the other end of the candle using the tools that I'm going to talk about today. And so the market traded down to the Taylor resistance number right over here, which basically was support, right? And then reversed, quickly reversed, and moved up from there. So is this the intraday high? Is this the intraday low? We don't know, okay? So I always say, use lots of patience. There's no rush. Now, typically, the gap will close 70, 75% of the time. But on, on Thursday, March 7th, prices never traded anywhere near the previous day's close. So, that's one piece of information that we could basically disregard, maybe never disregard the gap. And I'm going to show you why in the next chart. And so the market moved down to the Taylor resistance number, then moved up from there, never tested this number again, and then moved further up and basically took out the high over here that was put in just after the open. And so where is the other end of the candle? Well, if this is not the intraday high, because it was taken out over here, and this is the intraday low, we can take a guess. Take a guess, okay? The guess is this was the low. This was the low of the day, the intraday low. So using the Taylor trading range, make a copy of it and paste the copy to the intraday low right over there, right over here, okay? To 
get an estimate of where the market is going to trade up to. And I don't have to explain what you're looking at right here. The market traded up to the Taylor range, up through the Taylor range, and that was where the market ended. That was the other end of the candle, okay? So that was Thursday, March 7th. Now let me go over to, now remember on Thursday, March 7th, prices didn't trade in, inside the Taylor trading range, but it traded the, ra the range that, the, that was predicted was the range that prices moved. Now here is Friday, March 8th. And on Friday, March 8th, the, the market started up just about, just near the top of the Taylor trading range, toward the top, moved up to the resistance level, but pierced the resistance level and continued moving up for about half an hour, 40 minutes. This is 10.06. Now, is this the intraday low? Is this the intraday high? At this point, we don't know. Again, use patience because if you miss a trade, if you don't make the trade, you don't lose money. It's better to try to get where the beginning of the candle is to find where the other end of the candle is. So we find the intraday high was put in over here because right over here, right over here, we took out the intraday low, which, would, which had been the intraday low, which was exactly where the market opened. We took that out, and so we can make a, an estimate of this may be the intraday high. So at this point, maybe the market is going to trade down through the existing Taylor trading range, or we can clone it. So let's clone it as we did the previous day. We move it up to the intraday high, okay? And so here is a level where the market might end, okay? Now, I have my cloned trading, trading zone, but I also have the original trading zone because that's still valuable. And so the market traded down through the, uh, th through the calculated range, the transposed calculated range, and basically stayed there for about an hour, well over an hour, but then dropped down to the calculated, the original calculated trading zone. So all these are clues and really, what I'm trying to say in this video is try to find the beginning of the candle because what you will want to do is to use that information to trade to the end of the candle. And so that's, that's information that can save a lot of time and a lot of learning if you've spent thousands of dollars in learning how to trade. Believe me, trading is not easy. Trading is simple though. It's not easy, but it is simple. You just need to know what to look for. Now, these are big picture trades. The trading zone is a big picture trade. It's not a scalping a trade strategy. I teach that in my course as well with the six gap with the six trade setups, GST, TMC, gap, support and resistance, trend, time and price, momentum, and candlestick. And these are scalp trades. If you're a scalper or if you're more comfortable scalping, you'll learn that in my course. But if you want to use a bigger time frame of Taylor Trading Calculator and the tra Taylor Trading Zone is what you want to use as tools to help you find the other end of the candle and make bigger trades for bigger profits. That's my video for today. Marv Eisen for Timeless Dollar Trading Academy. Trade safely, use lots of patience. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.